I want to preach for a few moments out of Mark 5, 25 to 29, a familiar story, one that I love, one of my favorite stories, one of my favorite stories to preach on. I preached on it so much when I was 16, I quit preaching on it after I was 17 because I preached on this blessed little woman all over the country. And so it's not often that I get to preach about her. And I'm going to today in verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing battered, bettered, but rather grew worse. Look at that. Was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. It was when she heard of Jesus, it was when she came in the press behind and touched his garment because she said, if I can just touch his garment, I shall be made whole. We love you, Lord, and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this incredible time together and all that has been accomplished in your great name. In the name of the Lord, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Let's give God some good praise and some thanks and some honor. Come on, let's give him some good glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's starting to sound familiar. Hallelujah. It's starting to feel like home. Thank you, Jesus. I pray today that as I preach this message, I will be very cautious but yet very conscious of the fact that there may be those here right now that feel like that you have issues that are beyond repair. There are those of you today that feel like that you're walking in a place that God can't move for you and you can't be forgiven. There's people that are walking in here in a backslidden condition, perhaps. There's people here that know they need to be in a better place and a greater place as it relates to the goodness of God. But for whatever reason, you feel apprehensive about just going on and jumping in. I pray today that I will cover enough of the bases that you understand you need God now more than you've ever needed him in your life. I stay concerned about people that know they're living right and know they're going to heaven. So if I stay concerned over people like that, you ought to know there is a burden for people that I wonder in their minds if they know whether or not confidently that they know that God is able to do what he promised. And then there's a group of people today, it may be just a small minority of people, but there may be those today that just feel like I've never even been to an altar. I've never accepted Jesus. And I pray today that over the totality of the message, somewhere in there, you will feel the the piercing power of conviction and that God is going to move on you. And just because the enemy messes with me like that, I know that there are people in here that need what I'm about to preach because he always tries to get in the details and mess people up. But I like a good fight every once in a while. Hallelujah. Because I know who's fighting my battles. I'm not telling him to bring it on, but I'm just telling you, I know when he starts to fight that that good battle points to some great victory. So tell your neighbor, I know who's fighting my battles. I know who's fighting my battles. Let me quickly get to where I believe that God has assigned me today, and it's this. It's about the pressure, the pressure. I want to talk about the pressure today because pressure is not a bad thing. Pressure can be your best friend. Some people either cringe under it, some people crumble under it, or some people rise to the occasion and say, I like pressure. There's just people that know how under a certain amount of pressure to really rise to the top and say, I know God is in this. Now, if you want to know what pressure is, pressure is when you have 30 plus thousand men and God tells you, you only need to take 300. Pressure is three Hebrew boys saying that we're going to throw you in the midst of a burning fiery furnace and find the biggest guards and we're going to heat it up and you're going in. That's pressure. 
Pressure is you've got to lead these people out of Egypt and all you're going to do is stand there and lift that rod up over the sea and I'm going to take care of the rest. That's pressure. That's pressure to trust God, believe God, and to know that he's able. But if you've never been put in a circumstance, a predicament like that, you will never know the faithfulness of God. For those of you that are going through trials this morning, mishaps have happened. You've been mishandled. Mistrust has invaded your life because of the way people have acted around you and relationally it just wasn't right nor was it fair. But how would you ever know that the faithfulness of God is as such if you never had to walk through a valley, if you never had to go through a trial, or if you never had to depend on God to move on your behalf? How would you ever know that God is a healer till your baby's in the hospital and you're depending on God to take care of it? How would you know that God is able if you never had to face anything that it could only take God to get you out of it. That is because the faithfulness of God can be trusted and he doesn't need a warranty. He's got a promise that he will be with us and stick closer to us than any brother. No matter what you're going through present day, no matter what you'll ever face up the road, no matter the trial or the significance of it, I'm telling you there is a savior that knows how to fix it and there's a God that is real and there's a son that is seated at the right hand of the father and he's making intercession for you and I and there's a big holy ghost that's loose on this planet woman had an issue for 12 years issue means to waste away in other words the blood was traveling from a place and exiting from another That's the problem that we run into problematically over the course of our Christian life is when something gets to go in the wrong way and something comes out from an area, it shouldn't come out. Sometimes problems will hit you and make life so difficult that the frustration flows right out of your mouth and you should have never said what you said. Sometimes things misplace themselves in your life and the blood ain't flowing the way it should be going. And all of a sudden, because the pressure of the body, something gets loose from the system and that's not where that should have came out. And so therefore, sometimes we say things because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And it's always easier to be frustrated and to say things that help you defensively talk about the frustration that you're going through than it is to trust God and let the Lord have it. It's easier to open up your mouth and curse something than it is to trust God sometimes. It's easier just to go on and say what you want to say instead of keeping your mouth closed and saying, God, help me. And I say that respectfully. So let let me tell you a lot of people have issues but you've got to be careful that stuff doesn't start flowing in the wrong area and you've got to be careful that stuff doesn't come out of the wrong place and you've got to be careful that you don't start le- losing your peace of mind and you've got to be careful that you don't lose your peace in your heart and that you don't lose your joy and that you don't lose your hope no matter what happens in your life you have got to continually be on a faith walk that I'm going to trust God no matter what it may look like. I'm going to depend on Jesus. We can't get caught up with trying to rid people of addictions when the real problem exists beneath the skin, buried deep in their system. That something is going on, that the travel and the flow is off. Something's not right and things are escaping. The life is in the blood and life was exiting her body. And sometimes we get to say in things that just throw death all over us. And sometimes we take the life giving forth and start cursing everything that God has promised. That it's never going to get any better. I'm never going to get out of this. How in the world am I going to make it? I can't climb that hill. I can't. I can't get over that chasm. I can't span and bridge this. I mean, this is difficult. Those are all things you'll be tempted to say. But if you would just get you a scripture and let it flow up out of your belly, rivers of living water and continually depend on the Lord. See, the problem is a lot of people get their hope in a preacher or they get their hope in a gospel group or they get their hope in a pew filled with people surrounding them. They get their dependency on a friend's list. They get their dependency on relationships. But I'm telling you, 
telling you right now, you've got to stop looking at people and you've got to stop listening to everything the enemy is lying to you about. And sometimes you've got to take yourself away from the influences of a secular system and a hell-bound generation and tell God up in heaven, I know that you are able, that you have promised and you will do because I'm confident of what you promised. You got to understand something, saints of God. She suffered through many physicians. She suffered looking for the answer. She suffered struggling for the need that was deep in her heart that could only be met by a touch of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. You might think a smoke in a joint is a lot of fun, but it's going to bring suffering. You might think a 12 pack is gonna be the end all and that it's gonna help you out, but you're gonna do a lot of suffering. You may think a couple of pills extra on the side is gonna relieve some pain, but it's gonna cause you suffering. You're gonna think an extramarital affair is going to help aid and abed your difficulty, but you're gonna suffer. You might think looking at something on the internet is really gonna ease your mind, but you're gonna end up suffering. Anytime you exalt that flesh and you try to feed that flesh, your flesh can never get enough. It can't have enough money. It can't look young enough. It can't look good enough. It can't be pretty enough. It can't be good enough. It is always wanting more, 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 more. Every day it wants some more. But I found out as long as I got Jesus and as much as I get of God, there gets a hunger down on the inside of me that quenches every thirst I have. I said all that to get right here. I believe I'm surrounded by pressers. I believe I'm surrounded by people that know how to press. I believe I'm surrounded by people that searched and sought this church out. I believe I'm surrounded by revival makers. I believe I'm surrounded by people that enjoy being in the presence of the Lord. I'll go a little further and say, I believe I'm surrounded by a bunch of Jesus junkies. I believe surrounded by revival seekers I believe I'm surrounded by people that believe that the gifts of the spirit are still in operation for today I believe I'm surrounded by people that no matter what is going on in the mess you've been leaving the last 12 years of your life that ain't going to keep me from my press I believe there's some pressers in the house I believe there's some people that say I'm not settling for this anymore I'm not going to sit by like this anymore y'all got to get out of my way because I got to touch him Let's give the woman credit. Let's give the church credit. Let's give the church credit. Man, I love to, I love to preach against cussing preachers when I get the chance. I love to preach against the apostate church and drinking preachers. I like to preach against everything that gives Christianity and me being so pro-church a bad name. But let me tell you something. Let's jump off that bandwagon for a minute and take a look around at a church that loves God, that's seeking the presence of the Lord, that loves his spirit, that loves the freedom of relationship, that's thank God they're not in this for religious reason, but that they have a spiritual foundation and that they really have a desire to see the maimed to walk and the lame to get up and the dumb to speak and the deaf to hear and the blind to see, that really is believing that God is able to do what he promised. Shout if you believe he's able. Woo. I believe there's some people that are after God. Hey man, we beat up the church the last several months here, there, and everywhere long enough. I'm going to tell you, I believe there's still a church because I believe I'm standing in one. I believe I'm standing in a church that's on fire. I believe I'm standing in and amongst some people of God that are hungry for revival if God said it's going to happen. I believe I'm standing in the midst of people that are willing to press. 
I believe there's some people that are willing to get up under the pressure of life and say, I don't care what that doctor says. Pastor, you go on and trust the Lord. I don't care what the economists say. You go on and trust the Lord. I don't care what the secular system says about inflation and gas prices. You keep trusting God because they can't go any higher than what God is going to lift you off the ground. Let the gas come up. God going to take you higher. Let inflation come up. God's going to take you Come on. Let me talk about a woman for 12 years that got tired and got weary. Let me tell you a woman for 12 years that nearly gave up a couple times and got aggravated and frustrated because over a 12 year time span, she'd been to doctors that couldn't help her. Herbs couldn't help her. Mixture of ingredients that couldn't touch it. But she keeps pressing. I believe this is a picture of redemption. That we've had to press through some mess. And the ideology of people that think it ought to be done a certain way, most typically, their way. Stuff like you don't have to preach that way. Stuff like you don't have to get so excited. Don't have to be so thrilled. Don't have to look forward to going to church. Just give God an hour on Sunday morning and go on back home. I don't mean to to be disrespectful. I told you that I'm thankful to be in a church that I believe is full of a bunch of pressers. People that know that if I can touch him, if I can be associated with something that's attached to him. She didn't say, I want him to talk to me. She didn't say, I want him to see me. She didn't say, I need him to come to my house. She didn't say, I need him to lay hands on me. She said, if I could touch just his clothes, you realize if you get close enough. I said, do you realize that if you just get close enough, that you just touch the hem of his garment that it would be enough you see I don't believe it was just the garment it was her faith that said if I grab it I'm gonna get it I dare you to tell your neighbor you gotta get close enough you're gonna have to come out from among them be a separate and know that God is gonna give you what you need when you It'd be all right if we stood up and shouted just a minute, wouldn't it, wouldn't it, wouldn't it, wouldn't it? Have I got any pressers in the house? Where's my pressers at? Where's my, where's my pressers at? That are just here to impress God. That are just here to suppress the enemy. Come on, how long's it been since you told him sit down? How long's it been since you reminded him of his demise? How long has it been since you told him you're the one that's sick? How long's it been since you said you're the one that's defeated? How long has it been since you said, I read the back of my book called The Weight of God. And you will be defeated just as you are right now. Where's my pressers at? Just get in the always if you don't mind and just go high five a couple people and shout, I need to press in. I need to press in. Woo! I need. <laughs> I need. I need to feel his presence. I need to feel his joy. I need to feel his peace. I need to know that he's in the crowd somewhere. And as long as I know he's somewhere near me, I don't have to have him speak to me. I don't even need his hand. I just need to touch something associated with him close enough that it has the power to bring my joy and bring my healing and bring my peace back. That 
That was the introduction. I'm preaching now. That was just the introduction. I'm preaching now. When I was a little boy, I had two precious grandmas. I had one that always had a cold classic Coke in the bottles in the refrigerator. And she could make fried potatoes like nobody else. She could scramble up eggs on a Sunday afternoon when dad pick us up for visitation. She can make pork chops and a black skillet. And I'm thankful for my rich heritage. I had a grandma, thank you Lord, thank you Lord. That grandma, my daddy's mama, that was Mabel. Her husband was Hamp, Hamp and Mabel. My dad is Merle. Hallelujah, we got some Kentucky blood in us. <laughs> my middle name is Todd. Hallelujah. You know me by brother preacher, <laughs> young reverend, or young pastor. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but my first name is also Merle. And I've got a grandma on the other side from out of Redbird, Kentucky, named Rosa. She married Charles. Hallelujah. I'd go to Grandma Rosie's house out on uh, Hartman Road. They call it Brookville Phillipsburg. Y you say what you want. But I'd go over there and here's what I'd say to grandma. I say, Grandma, I said, I don't want to sleep down the other edge of the house from you. Those were back in the days before I got delivered from Harry James. And I'd say, Grandma, if you don't mind, I'd like to sleep next to you in bed. Grandma would then say to me, I'll tell you what, Toddy boy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay you a place on the ground right next to me on the wood floor. She'd put a rug down. She'd come from the generation that the refrigerator was called a Frigidaire. And when you sat on the couch, that was the Davenport. And she had a place in between the kitchen door and the front door, and it was a long, elongated little lobby she called a breezeway. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there were other names. Thank you, Lord. But she said, I'm going to lay you a place out with some quilts. I'm going to give you one of them feathered pillows. I begged my parents for a feathered pillow when I laid my head on a feathered pillow. Now, hallelujah, I got me two of them. Amen. And if I want a my pillow, I got one of them too, Mike. Thank you, Jesus. But let me tell you something. She'd say to me, she'd say, here's what I'm going to do. You're going to fall off to sleep, but I'm going to throw my hand over the side of the bed. And I want you to get my hand. And I can't tell you how many times I'd sleep next to my grandma and I would hold her hand. I would wake up in the morning and see the light coming through the sides of that blind. And I would have my grandma's little hands where you could see that age had gotten to it. And the little veins were all puckered up all over her hand. And it looked like them praying hands you see pictures of. But my grandma would hold my hand. And when I woke up in the morning, I had no problem going to sleep. I had no fear when my grandma's hand was holding mine. Let me tell you something. And there's been times in my life that I thought, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know how I'm going to make it. But you can rest assured, when I felt his hand in my hand, I'm going to sleep good. I'm going to wake up at the right time. I know that God is able to do what he promised he was going to do. But let me tell you, we've got to press and pursue. You've got to press, and you don't press just on Sunday morning to get to church. You press on Sunday afternoon when that devil comes to fight. You press on Sunday night. You press on Wednesday night. But you've got to press Thursday morning and Monday morning. Let me tell you, when I'm a little wiped out on Monday morning, I still have to press. I'm just as saved as when I'm excited on the way to church on Sunday morning. You've got to press. You might lose some blood. You might lose peace of mind. You might lose a little joy, but that don't mean you're going to give up over that. You've got to keep on. On pressing. Come on, somebody, and tell your neighbor, I'm going to keep on pressing, pressing, pressing. Let me tell you something. Pressure, pressure promotes the body's strength, but exposes its weakness too. You have pressure in your body. Skin holds this all together, and it's under pressure. The biggest organ of the body, the skin, holds everything under pressure. My heart's beating right now and there's something we call blood pressure. My body woke up this morning with rhythm in it. Not because I'm a singer or a pastor or the algorithms of the deliverance. But I'm telling you, there is a sound that's going through my body right now. And it's got 
the high side and it's got the low side. And I oftentimes talk to nurses and or doctors and they'll tell me, well, this one has to be here and that one has to be there. And it's boom, 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 boom. And it's writing the story of your life. Sometimes you just need to sing a song to it because your body is in a rhythm right now. It is in a rhythm. When you walk, you walk in a rhythm. You might speed up, you might slow down. When you sing, you've got to sing in rhythm so that there is a melodious tune that comes into the atmosphere. When you run, you've got to run in rhythm. When you start your car, it's going to have a timing belt or a timing chain if it's not electric. Hallelujah. And you don't want my opinion on that one. Hallelujah. I like the sound of a muffler. I like the ability to go across the country and not have to sit for two hours to charge something. That reminds me of too many other things that seem like a little control for me. Oh, I can't help nobody now because they won't help me out. Ain't nobody gonna shout. We weren't built in this country on electric cars. I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but there's something about a time and chain. There's something about a 302 dual exhaust. There's something about a Mustang that rumbles when you turn it on. I'm sorry, you bunch of Chevy fans. I gotta say exactly what I gotta say. Everything's in time. Your, your life is a song. There's something that's happening in the atmosphere and everybody's marching and you might not be as fast as everybody else, but if you keep on pressing, you're going to have some beats on the feet of where you go and you're gonna get closer to where your deliverance is. Can I just get anybody that's hungry for a move of God beyond what you've seen and that blows off the limitation? <laughs> pressure promotes your strength because we find out who you are under pressure. How's he going to respond under pressure? Let me tell you, ministry has pressure. And you can't have thin skin. Does an amens on that one? Let me tell you, when pressure comes, when pressure comes, you've got to be able to roll with it. You roll with it at work. You roll with it in your personal life. You roll with it relationally. You roll with it economically. Everybody has. Pressure of gas prices. Pressure that I can't get any toilet paper in my house. Pressure that the little lady behind me sent it in line several years ago, a couple years ago, wanted me to buy her five rolls of Charmin, four rolls a piece. I said, Lord have mercy. Never mind what I said. Never mind. Come on. But I'm thinking to myself, what is going on? Is toilet paper, come on everybody. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from, saints of God? That we're not going to roll with the mess of what goes on in the world. And we're not going to be troubled by the mess that goes on around us. When you get under pressure like that, it shows who you are. Are you, can I just be secularist just for a second and say you ain't going to spaz out? You're not going to get mad because you get a little pressure? I can't. I can't get under pressure because of everything that's going on. So when you get under pressure, it will promote your strength because people will look at you and say, I can't imagine how he pulled that off. That must have been immense amounts of pressure. That's what God's people do. Under pressure, we are our best. Because that's when we know I gotta, I gotta start praying right now. I gotta pray if I'm gonna get out of this. Pressure, pressure. Let me say as much as it promotes your strength, but it exposes your weaknesses while magnifying that weakness at the same time. You will find out in the body where the weakness is when stress hits, when pressure comes. Come on, stay with me, church. I gotta help you. I gotta help you. I'm gonna go Wednesday night on you right here. Pressure promotes the body's strength. It promotes the body's strength. Helps you to understand where you're strong at. It shows where you're gifted at. Shows what you're good at. There's some people under pressure, they ain't getting the microphone. There's some people under pressure, I'm not asking them to say anything. There's some people under pressure, I will run from them. 
But if I know where they're gifted at under pressure, I will grab them and push them out front and say, this is where you're gifted, go. God knew where to find David at when the children of Israel were under pressure. God said, I can't get any of these boys under pressure to do anything. But let me find me a little shepherd boy on the backside of a desert, wilderness. And that's what happens. Let me tell you, the body is only as strong as its weakest member. To a person that's being considered for something. I promise you as much as they consider the strengths of that individual, at the end of the process, they will then ask, where's his weakness? Where's he weak? Well, according to his resume, according to his former employer, according to his friends, if you really want to dive deep and vet the person, come on, you're going to want to know what their weakness is. So that way you know that you don't push them toward their weakness just yet. You get them acclimated by their strengths. And then their weakness will come out at some point. It ain't going to take you long when you hang out with people long enough to know exactly where their weakness is. And if that weakness starts to pop up, you grab them by the nap of the neck and pull them away because they're not cut out for it yet. I feel the boldness of the Lord right now. Don't be looking around like he ain't talking to me. I'm talking to all of us. Ain't nobody in here got it all together. We're still a work in progress. That's why we're here. I know what our church is cut out for. I know what our church is capable of. And I know there are things that I'm going to hold off on. There's things I'm not going to do that yet. I know where we are. I feel like I've got the pulse of what God wants to do. Thank you, Lord. But I also know what we're going to stay away from because that's not my lane. Can I get a witness? Job 14, 7 says, because she said, if I may touch but his clothes. This is where we are. Everybody in here saying something like that right now. If I could just, like when I used to, if I could just. I, I remember when I felt better and if I could just, if I could adjust, if I could just. And that's what she said. If I may but just touch. And that's where you have to get to, saints. Where you move beyond where you are right now with blood all over yourself and coming from somewhere it shouldn't and you're losing it quickly and you've been there 12 years and you say but if I could just if I could just that's where everybody's at right now everybody in this house is saying that right now well if I could just pay that bill you know if I could just get that car paid off you know if I could just get him to understand where I'm coming from if I could just get her to listen to me if I could just get my children straightened up from being jacked up. If, if I could just get my kitchen under control. If I could just get along with the people I work with. If I could just convince. If I, if I, if I, if I. If I could just go up there and know that God would meet me there. If I could just turn my life over to God and know I can do this. If, if I could just go up there and know that God was going to take care of me. It, it's always an if. Everybody comes in this church, sits there saying, if I. If I, if I had more time, if I could have said, if I would have said, if I had it to do all over again, if I could roll back the clock 20 years, if I could just go back to 1973 and the coach would have put me in and I could have thrown that ball, it all could have ended differently today. Come on, you better push your neighbor right there. If I could just go back to 1987 and change what I said, if I could go back to 1999, if I could go back to 2000 and tell them people ain't no computer going to crash, God's got this. If I could go back and tell them Jesus ain't coming in 1988 and there's 88 reasons. If I could just, if I, if I, if I, everybody in here is living on an if, stop it. Because all you need is to touch his garment. Job 14, 7, for there's hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. You have to look beyond where you are and say, if I, which is where many of you are right now, 
There are people under the sound of my voice that have ran from God long enough. There are people under the sound of my voice that have put it off long enough. The Bible even gives us an incredible parable that one by one they begin to make excuse as to why they couldn't go to the supper, the dinner. There will be no excuse on that day and certainly not now because I have preached it so simplistic that you understand based upon a woman that had a 12-year problem that she finally said, if I could touch anything associated with him, I can be made whole. I'm convinced it was the touching of the garment, but I'm also convinced it was the words of her mouth by faith that said, if I get a hold of him, it's going to be all right. Some of y'all just need to grit your teeth right now and just say, if I could get a hold of him, my life is going to change. Y'all are going through things I don't understand. You all are facing things I can't wrap my mind around. And I've been through things over the last year, and I won't be specific, I'll call it a year, that I could say to myself, I'm not quite sure why. And I even let the why come out. Because I never want to be known as one that doesn't trust God. But in the natural, you do ask questions at times. And please, 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 don't don't judge me where I'm at. Just see where I'm going. Don't speculate. Don't speculate about where I'm at, and I won't speculate about where you're at. I won't speculate about your issue if you don't speculate about my issue. But as long as I'm pressing, and as long as I'm pursuing God, as long as I know that he is able, I find comfort in knowing that I can find him in the midst of a storm, in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of difficulty.